Good afternoon. On behalf, on behalf of the Kennan Institute, I would like to welcome everyone to the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. The Wilson Center is the living mo national memorial to President Wilson, established by Congress in 1968 and headquartered in Washington, D.C. The center establishes and maintains a neutral forum for free, open, and informed dialogue. It is a nonpartisan institution supported by public and private funds and engaged in the study of national and world affairs. The Kennan Institute bridges the divide between the world of ideas and the world of public affairs by bringing scholars and governmental specialists together to discuss political, social, and economic issues affecting Ukraine, Russia, and other successor states to the Soviet Union, seeking always to place these issues within their historical context. We are very pleased to have such a large audience uh, in the auditorium and also via our webcasts, which are being transmitted in both Ukrainian and English. Uh, this is Deputy Lezhichko's first time performing, uh, participating in a public lecture such as this in the United States. I'm sorry, the performance always comes first. <laughs> I suppose we're always hoping you might hear a song or two. Um, so before, but before we do pass on to uh, uh, Deputy Lezhichko's uh, discussion for today, I would like to recognize some people in the audience and allow them about one or two minutes to say their introductory remarks. Uh, we are first and foremost very pleased to have Ambassador Oleg Shamsher present with us, and I would like to give him one moment to introduce um, the Ukrainian Embassy to uh, this event. It's a pleasant surprise, and, uh, but I'm really pleased to uh, uh, have this opportunity to speak very uh, briefly to you. We are very pleased to have an opportunity to greet here together with you uh, Ruslan Lizhichka, who is not only a major star, but also a very respected uh, member of parliament who is doing a lot for uh, charity, for social causes, and we are uh, pleased that uh, recently, we had a series of visits of Ukrainian parliamentarians, Ukrainian officials, and we think it's extremely important that uh, these people have an opportunity to address American audience, to express their views, and thus contribute to better understanding between our two peoples, and thus promote uh, Ukrainian-American strategic uh, uh, partnership. So that's very briefly. Uh, definitely, uh, I hope to see you tomorrow at the uh, Slavic Festival in George Washington University and uh, at other events which will be sponsored, I presume, by the embassy and the uh, center in future. Thanks. Я була би рада так коротко говорити, як пан посол, але я боюсь, що speak so briefly as ambassador, but I have a lot of information for you, so probably a few minutes will not do, even though uh, it would be good to learn at parliament to limit my presentation and speeches, but the last uh, speech um, I was happy that I was given an additional time and even surprised the parliament of Ukraine, which is almost impossible late before you, you see a person who uh, calls her, herself a social and a political activi activist, a person who, after a year of vision, uh, is linked to uh, international image of Ukraine and did everything possible uh, because was sure that after the Orange Revolution within our country, we didn't have any problems and we chose our path to democracy regardless of all kind of waves that we see in news and uh, uh, those uh, uh, with regard of information on the internet, I can guarantee you that those waves are uh, only between two e uh, eras when Ukraine is, chooses, is choosing its way, uh, its path uh, uh, towards European direction. And this is a very complicated battle between old ideology of the former Soviet Union and new ideology that we see uh, developing in Ukraine. Because we have a fantastic culture and we were able to preserve it, Ukraine is a region where uh, over 25 ethnic groups live in and one of unique countries in the world. Uh, Ukraine is uh, developing its ideology 
as an independent country, uh, state, and uh, its geographic position is very interesting uh, because we see the latest events with regard to energy, and we know that this is a transit zone. I would not support these kind of views. Ukraine is a large country. Over 48 million live in Ukraine, and it's a wonderful a uh, country of wonderful people who try to uh, get democracy today. Uh, uh, I am a member of parliament for the past year only. I am a head of the committee. I developed my own subcommittee within the Committee on Inter uh, European Integration, and I am a head of a subcommittee on information, uh, on information that is informing people on uh, European and Euro-Atlantic integration. I traveled so much all over the world, and I understand many countries because uh, as a singer, I worked with audience, with mass media. I felt uh, uh, th them very well and used this opportunity to, me to uh, promote my message uh, as a singer. But uh, as a politician today, I deal more uh, with uh, legislative issues, and uh, my task is to improve uh, the laws on intellectual property, copyright, uh, those are pragmatic laws, and we still are working social and also social policy and uh, uh, fight against uh, human trafficking, maybe number one issue today, because Ukraine is suffering probably the most with its image uh, as a, c a country is blamed uh, for uh, a country that is a supplier of uh, human uh, uh, goods, human uh, uh, commodity, and uh, women are suffering out of that, uh, having no rights. In uh, my new project, uh, my priority message is to fight against drugs, uh, dopings, and also charitable activity. Uh, lately, I develop, I established my own uh, fund, uh, Ukrainian uh, Sunrise, and we. Uh, conduct different kind of events and uh, spend money for children's hospitals. Specifically, I am also a go uh, goodwill ambassador of UNICEF, and I worked a lot in uh, Europe, Ukraine, uh, and Baltics uh, because uh, um, I participated in many uh, concerts, and we are fundraising, uh, doing fundraising to buy equipment for uh, those hospitals. And we will initiate uh, some closed uh, uh, hearing in Parliament on issues of supporting or, uh, uh, boarding schools and uh, orphanages. F this is a very important, uh, specifically supporting the uh, orphanage homes and also supporting uh, boarding schools for for chil handicapped children. This is very briefly, but uh, today's meeting is very important for me because I would like to um, hear more from you and uh, somehow develop a picture from your questions. And my uh, answers will be open and candid. I might uh, um, show a more realistic situation of Ukraine because new news, uh, the most objective news, is have some color in it anyway. Before you, you have a live person who can comment on what is going on in Ukraine today. And I think that even though I have a pro-European a v uh, vision of our country's development, and that is why I am uh, on the team of Viktor Yushchenko, the president. That's why I am in politics, because this, is, uh, f this was very important for me to support this person, particularly everything that happened during his uh, presidency, happening pres during his presidency, is uh, uh, some uh, results of uh, what we did, and we are, I was with him during p the Orange Revolution, and I still continue supporting him, and I am in uh, a parliamentary f faction of president in the parliament. I would be happy to answer your uh, questions, because I can talk two or three hours here in front of you, and that will go on and on and for a long time. But if you um, have any questions and specific questions, I would be very happy to start answering your questions. I would like to thank the organizers and who conducted today's event. Uh, 
and the festival, Slavic festival, uh, that we will have tomorrow, because Slavic uh, culture is a topic that is not completely discovered for the world, and we uh, uh, didn't uh, show ourselves yet, and our ethnic heritage is something that is very important, and you should feel it tomorrow. We will try to transfer uh, the specifics of Carpathian Mar Mountains, one of the nicest and charismatic most charismatic areas of Ukraine. It's Western Ukraine. I was born in Lviv myself, and that is why uh, I personally would like to thank the Ambassador of Ukraine and Center uh, Woodrow Wilson Center, Lee Hamilton, President, Cannons Institute, Blair Rubel, uh, the Director. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to be with you today and communicate with you today. Thank you very much. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're sort of going to begin a dialogue with Ruslana on stage, and then after a couple of questions, we're going to welcome questions from the audience as well. Uh, uh, Ruslana has requested that I ask some of the questions in Ukrainian, so uh, we'll try to be fluent between the two. Uh, so I apologize in advance if there's going to be sort of um, some language transition going on in the audience. Uh, Руслана, я хотіла спочатку вас запитатися про um, це питання. First of all, about the human trafficking, specifically trafficking in humans. Uh, specifically, the most affected part of the society are women. How the role of women changing in Ukraine, what they see, how they see their future, specifically young people, young women. Do, does your campaign help with that? We work with um, OBRD. I am, if, uh, I am actually uh, working on the issues of uh, fight against uh, human trafficking. We uh, made several uh, films, small uh, films, and we believe that if we inform people well on all the levels, that will be one of the elements that uh, would stop uh, young women to uh, to do this because it is very hard to stop this scheme because uh, young ladies uh, are very, have a very hard time to find jobs. Specifically, uh, some uh, stays with. Uh, um, especially if a single mother, then she has a hard time to find a job. I talked with many women who were victims of this uh, uh, trafficking. The, they were sitting in front of me with uh, damaged uh, uh, destiny and described their situation. And it is very hard to trace down how it's happening. For example, they are just approached at the transportation mode, and they are asked uh, they, they say that uh, I can, we can offer you a job, we can uh, process all your documents, and um, young women uh, react very well to this, even though th they understand that that's not the way to offer a job, but uh, usually it happens somewhere in uh, uh, rural areas, not in oblast centers, because uh, women are more informed there and more jobs are there, but mo mo maybe in small towns and villages where they have harder time to find jobs. Those people work in those areas. Today, after we inform people, uh, many organizations uh, sent me letters uh, that they were very impressed and that affected the statistics. 40% uh, of uh, our population is informed on this issue. There is another issue that uh, people, unfortunately, want that job so much that they, this factor m might not even stop them, even when they are informed. Uh, the most important, uh, most difficult countries are Russia, Turkey, and others. That's, uh, those, uh, that's the uh, scheme that we have. I saw in uh, Istanbul today big uh, uh, boards. I saw that information. Uh, they warn about uh, this situation because it's uh, uh, summer is coming and a lot of people will be recruited for that purpose. So we will 
do we will conduct different events i uh, plan to do some fundraising on, uh, uh, for rehabilitation rehabilitation of these women because a lot of young uh, women uh, have to deal with this problem alone they cannot adapt to the society their parents abandon them disown them so this is a trage tragedy and uh, that's why I believe that my foundation will deal with this. I personally will do that, and all my initiatives will be dedicated to this cause. The next question, I would like to ask you about your activity as a goodwill ambassador of UNICEF. After the Orange Revolution, Yushchenko called upon people to show kindness to each other. And I think that your um, ambassadorship with goodwill, goodwill ambassadorship is a very good example of that. But how do you see that the understanding of this uh, goodwill this goodwill will somehow transfer to the society in Ukraine. Ukrainians um, are uh, probably all people, but I would like to say about us that we will never uh, look for problems, actually. We are uh, very inspired to help each other. It is easy to work in Ukraine. Uh, I would like to say that there are organizations that, and I even hear about those cases, that there are organizations that it is so hard to work with government today. They do not react to initiatives uh, uh, with regard to charity and uh, providing some humanitarian aids or any other assistance. I want to say that the society itself is different. Uh, uh, two days ago, I talked with a daughter of uh, President Yushchenko Vitalina, who is, as you know, uh, very active, and also um, uh, Katarina Yushchenko has a foundation, and they had a wonderful marathon today, uh, this year, during one evening, they were able to collect a large sum of money. There was a, uh, I, uh, we were in Germany at that time, about 9 million euro were able to collect, but that was 10 times as much. Uh, that's how much they were able to uh, collect m uh, in Ukraine for improvement of children's hospitals in Ukraine. I know about this because I work on that issue a lot. Specifically last year, we traveled uh, to different uh, hospitals, and all famous people of Ukraine were involved, singers, sport uh, athletes, politicians. They were traveling together with Katarina Yushchenko. I personally, my, my, my first contribution was during uh, uh, Eurovision in Kiev uh, as a winner. I brought Eurovision to Kiev, as you know, uh, during the government of Yanukovych, and we were very happy about it because uh, somebody uh, was uh, uh, g w w somebody won, and uh, at that time I understood that even if I sell everything, I will not be able to pay for that. And the first. Uh, uh, meeting on Eurovision was related to the fact, why do we need uh, Eurovision? <coughs> I was arguing with Yanukovych uh, government, <coughs> and I'm in opposition right now. As to that concert today, <coughs> uh, Eurovision concert, we worked, uh, the sponsor, sponsor was Coca-Cola, and we worked with the Chernobyl Foundation, the foundation that we trusted and a lot uh, the, a big part of that foundation is in the united states we <coughs> all money that we were able to collect we transferred to <coughs> dnipropetrovsk children's hospital number three about forty thousand uh, us dollars and later on we came to that hospital and we see that medical equipment with my picture and they said you are my uh, our godmother of all children that were saved by this equipment uh, um, well i agreed they said uh, probably i would not be able to feed all of them but um, 
uh, that's fine. And today we also worked with a well-known uh, German uh, singer, uh, Peter ha Fire. I go together with him on a tour in uh, May in Germany. 15 concerts, and we will do fundraising. Uh, over 15 uh, uh, pop stars will be there. Many uh, uh, those who are uh, famous in their countries, and I was invited. Uh, everybody will f do fundraising for his or her own country. I initiated uh, uh, the issue of uh, aftermath of Chernobyl and specifically working with the hospitals uh, who uh, treat children uh, uh, with disabilities as a result of uh, Chernobyl. And we have about $100,000 worth of equipment and hope to collect uh, twice as much uh, uh, in spring. And those are my personal uh, inputs. And I believe that the, in the nearest future, this uh, event will be also uh, uh, dedicated to Amosov's Institute. You probably know is one of the most imp one of the famous institutes, uh, Heart uh, Institute. And um, unfortunately, we have although we have wonderful specialists, wonderful doctors, but uh, equipment is unfortunately in an, in, in far from the best situation. And sometimes we have to just gr uh, take our own money and help with this situation. But this. This is a good example for other for others. I also uh, tell my colleagues in Parliament, say, instead of drinking an extra uh, bottle of champagne, uh, use that money for uh, hospitals, uh, uh, because that's uh, uh, how we do. Sometimes even poor people react better than, other, than rich ones. Um, we also see an organization, American organization, and <laughs> rehabilitation center, uh, general law for cerebral palsy uh, patients in Lviv, and I am a patronage of that uh, um, initiative. Actually, those uh, that's an initiative of parents, and they created this charitable organization. They came to me and said that uh, they have some problems in these boarding schools for these children, and the children are not taken care of well. They, uh, there are s sometimes the information gets to press, but um, it is important for me because uh, those are just regular people who um, took initiatives in their hands, and we see that there are uh, all, there are also a lot of people in America that take initiatives, and it is nice of you to. Um, do this. Я би хотіла зараз conversation out to the audience, um, and I'll begin by um, recognizing that there are some co-sponsors of today's program, um, and that includes the U.S. Ukraine Foundation, and we're very happy to have Nadia Matkiewska, president of the U.S. Ukraine Foundation, here. I'm sorry, Nadia McConnell. <laughs> That's what happens when you have too much hope. You know, you have, you have Nadia, our both hope here. Um, and Nadia Matkiewski, um, who is the head of the Children of Chernobyl Relief and Development Fund, um, and perhaps as a continuation of what Ruslana was just discussing in terms of her activism in um, Chernobyl, um, I would like to um, give the floor maybe for a minute to Nadia Matkiewski. Thank you very much, Renata. Welcome, Mr. Ambassador, honored guest, and our dear Ruslana. I was so happy because you actually stole my speech. <laughs> Everything that you have said is exactly what we have done, except for two little items, and that is that besides that we bought the respirator in t uh, 2005, until today we are honored to tell you that 160 newborns were, were saved on your respirator. Then we also added a respirator to a Kiev hospital with your funds that we raised and also gave money to the Jirala clinic that serves and, and supports the cerebral palsy children. Uh, Ruslana, and I'm very honored because my husband here, the founder, also is sitting, but I was very honored, I guess, because we're females and we're strong and we're going to overcome. Razum nas bohato. And, and with that, I just want to tell you that I sent great regards from our board of directors, from medical advisory board, and from our advisory board in Ukraine that absolutely support you 
and you are a vision of the future for the future women of Ukraine. We wish that they follow in your footsteps in the political field, the musical field, but most of all, the humanitarian field. Because as you mentioned, the Ukrainian doctors in Ukraine are extremely, extremely talented, but they do lack the medical equipment and they need the technology. And in order to save the lives in Ukraine and, r and raise the medical level in Ukraine, we do need the medical support. So it is my pleasure to thank you again and honor you as a humanitarian. And maybe one day we will meet you again in Kyiv. I'm really happy to see you again. <laughs> Um, and actually, I would like to use uh, the same opportunity to introduce the second co-sponsor of uh, today's event, which is the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation. Um, Ruslana, being a member of, Cong of, of Parliament, um, there is a very strong effort now to promote um, a strong relationship between the U.S. Congress and the Ukrainian Parliament. And I would like to introduce Nadia Makiewski, who's president of the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation. <laughs> So I did it again, <laughs> Nadia McConnell. We're going to give her a new name. Nadia McConnell, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> well, thank you. And I wouldn't mind being adopted by the Matkiewski, so. <laughs> um, we're very honored to co-sponsor this event and to welcome our honored guest. Um, the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation has been working in Ukraine for over 17 years. We're the longest U.S. presence and we've been working more so in what we call democracy building. And we've had the pleasure of partnering with many organizations like the Kennan Institute. And we're very uh, interested. In fact, Chairman Hamilton was the first, uh, when he was chairman in Congress, to uh, secure funding for the first parliamentary development projects, which we did in the mid-90s in Ukraine. And now, as Renata mentioned, we're hoping to get some fundings to put some substance to the Congress Rada uh, partnership that exists on paper because the parliament, as you know and as we all know, is playing an ever-increasing, more important role uh, in, in the forming of uh, Ukraine's future. So uh, we're delighted to have you here. We hope that we will see you in the future regarding some activities we might have between Congress and Rada. If I might ask uh, a question, it is wonderful to see the developments um, and how society has been developing, particularly in attacking some of its own social problems. We've been really, really um, pleased as we've ha had the opportunity to host many organizations from Ukraine who are addressing some of the most complex social issues. And I think that is a wonderful development. And sometimes we feel, if I might be so bold or candid, and everybody knows that I am, it seems to me sometimes that the people of Ukraine are perhaps sometimes ahead of its political leadership. And if I might ask our guest, is there anything, how do you see hoping to change uh, the, the issues that are uh, in the Ukrainian government. It's, it seems to me so much energy and resources are now expended on the, the whole uh, struggle for uh, power, responsibilities, uh, and get it more focused on solving some of the problems which of course you have articulated and so many more. Because we also know that the basis of many social problems is the lack of economic development. So again, we're delighted to have you here. I think your presence here will again, as you said, raise the importance of Ukraine uh, here. And so we're so delighted that you've taken the time to do this. Thanks a lot. Nice question, thanks. <clears throat> Uh, I am trying to speak softly because Renata said that I have to behave like a member of parliament, not a, a singer. My project called Wild Dances, so now I'm trying to restrain myself. And a wonderful question, thank you. Candid questions can be regardless of the fact that we have journalists and cameras here. Ukraine understands today that its uh, international course 
and international behavior both within the country is not uh, identified. It's unpredictable, unforeseen, at least that's how it seems. Uh, that's, you are right, there is a battle. Fr from the moment of the Orange Revolution, I see that, uh, I think that somebody wants to have this uh, instability in Ukraine. Uh, uh, trust me, I know uh, Yushchenko personally, <clears throat> and I do not uh, want to do some kind of advertisement here. I love this person and I understand him, but I would like to tell you how, uh, what he does, unbelievable things to uh, capture the stability, to make sure that the situation is stable. What he does uh, in Ukraine, probably nobody would be able to do after the Orange Re Revolution, regardless who would be there. Uh, we would probably be get e getting even to civil war because we see that uh, the situation is very tense around energy, around NATO, and especially very uh, about second uh, Russian language, or that is to give Russian language a status of a second uh, state uh, language in Ukraine. Those are not an issue that are problematic for us. You trust me, uh, trust my words. Those are artificial problems and the issues. You understand that if a language, religion, and safety of Ukraine would be discussed, then that always creates conflicts. Uh, this is actually adding to the conflict all the time, adding uh, these waves to the conflict. I see that f fabricated false materials are developed. I will not say where. Uh, I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to create some kind of conflict today, but there are some actions at some place on that issue. And there are five people there, but they say that there are half of Ukrainians are there. And then that's why uh, we say that all of these uh, researches and all that uh, happens in Ukraine, you, you cannot use that um, because the forces that say that they are democratic, but in reality they do not be behave themselves democratically. Those forces are trying to buy Ukraine and be aggressive. You probably understand what I mean. Uh, as of today, Ukrainians, uh, the conscious part of Ukraine that want to see Ukraine democratic country, they have patience uh, because if you take away uh, people's hope, then that's it. Because I believe that we are living on hope, on beliefs, and we believe that we chose the right path, the right president, and any anti-Ukrainian phrases, informational provocations <coughs> are information provocations because those are manipulations that are based on uh, those issues. And that's uh, something that's going on within the country. But outside, I would like to uh, thank uh, Europe that they uh, support us, the NATO, and because they are kind to us. And I was uh, in NATO twice and met with the uh, Secretary General of NATO, and we discussed interesting issues uh, about cooperation. And I uh, uh, am very much concerned uh, that we're still not in European Union. We could have been there much earlier in restructure of uh, the society, but it's not happening because of objective situation. We need to keep the situation calm, uh, what we have, and it, it, trust me, this is the most important part for us to keep united Ukraine. I'd like to actually yeah, open it up to the audience, uh, as I think I'm going to begin abusing the microphone up front. So um, I would like to... Okay. <laughs> there are questions right after NATO. Um, I would like to begin with Natalia Tylech. There's, there's a microphone. Please identify yourself as well, even if I... Um, Natalia Tylech, um, 
I would like to thank you for your speech. I would like to be more specific about my question and question of Ms. McConnell and ask you the following. Several weeks ago, your colleague of, from Parliament, Yulia Tymoshenko, was here and um, the uh, way out of this confrontation that you described, she said that uh, early election would be the solution and within the past two days, the situation in Ukraine, at least outside, looks very unclear and it looks uh, that there could be early election, um, or looks like it's realistic. Uh, what do you think about the dismissal of the parliament and early election? And what do you see uh, what will happen after the protests that uh, will take place uh, during the weekend and after the meeting between the factions? I know that the president does uh, everything right because uh, there is limit to anyone's uh, patience and we talked that Viktor Andreevich uh, you can take you can take it but there are limits and if somebody doesn't keep his or her word and they sign the universal agreement and next day they t say absolutely opposite things then then to put it nicely it's not uh, uh, only bad from professional political point, but also from human point. I believe that President, unfortunately, today uh, already included the artillery, uh, and we tr he tried always to keep the situation calm, and we didn't even talk about the early parliamentary election, even when it was discussed in press. Uh, after this f fifth uh, um, session, um, everybody started to talk about this next day because probably there were some talks about it. There is some danger. The, uh, Yushchenko, the words of Yushchenko are privatization of parliament. No, he will not let it happen. He, uh, he has to guarantee the, um, uh, uh, the um, constitution, adherence to constitution. We see that there are some uh, issues in Ukraine and we are, we are talking about the politic, political elite that already uh, exists in Ukraine, which is not elite completely and is not uh, candid in its behavior. I'm trying to be diplomatic in my wording, uh, but uh, probably uh, uh, there are people who use more sharp words. I'm trying to keep this diplomatic mission. Uh, that's why I believe that uh, our president will sit at the table with them and will somehow uh, calm those waves down. Uh, th those waves are stirred up even of those who are at the power today. Specifically, uh, there are some people who try to accelerate this process and get uh, to uh, election not two years uh, from now but earlier and they probably want everything. Sometimes they forget uh, about the methods that they used and sometimes they repeat those methods and uh, we would not like to see that this will bring, this will lead to additional mass meetings. I know that the president will try to calm the situation down and he will try to find compromises as it happened during summer. You know when the coalition was developing. Uh, at that time I talked with Viktor Andreevich many times and called him. We were, uh, we had a hard time uh, uh, to uh, appoint prime minister. I didn't vote for Yanukovych and everybody knows why. And actually nobody was commenting uh, because I uh, know that everybody understands why I didn't vote for Yanukovych, but I think that this uh, uh, situation will be um, will be will be solved uh, well I don't think that there will be early parliamentary election I think that this will be uh, the last warning of president to those who are very emotional today extremely emotional today I cannot comment on Yulia Volodymyrovna's uh, uh, words I uh, respect her very well uh, very much and we have wonderful relationships relationship with her, but nevertheless, I would uh, call all upon all politicians in Ukraine to unite instead of breaking up the society, but rather to stabilize the society, the, the situation in the country, because we need to uh, 
find uh, and develop some kind of course because Ukraine cannot make a single step towards that goal because l recently I met with the head of the of NATO assembly we talked uh, 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 we had uh, meetings on uh, Euro integration, and I said that we even cannot discuss those issues because um, uh, uh, even though I am uh, very much involved in social policy, but we, today we cannot deal with these issues because the f number one issue is the situation in the country that destabilizes uh, Ukraine. I'm a reporter for Europolitics. Um, it's, it's precisely on your opinions on NATO and the EU. I mean, could you just elaborate a little bit on what you would like to see happen in future years, um, especially w with NATO, because there's a big debate, I believe, in, inside Ukraine about whether uh, Ukraine should belong to NATO. So I'd like to, to know your views on that. And also a more uh, topical issue today, um, the new missile shields which are being placed in in Poland and in the Czech Republic by the United States. I'm just wondering, have you any particular viewpoint on that issue? Uh, yes, I will talk about NATO um, with pleasure, but I cannot talk about missiles because I'm not that informed. We established a subcommittee on information because we believed <laughs> that the society is not informed very well what is that. Ukraine is still um, thinks, and I don't understand why, a lot of Ukrainians believe that uh, NATO is uh, something who knows what. They still have that uh, position, that view from the Soviet times. If we do polling in Ukraine today, then that's what the view of uh, older generation would be. But when we established this subcommittee, uh, our f number one task was to propose to the budget um, the following, to uh, allocate at least 15 million hryvnias for information. I'm not sure how much in dollars will that amount be, but that's not enough to provide informational, to conduct informational campaign. Uh, then after discussion, we reduced that uh, amount to 10 million, and in the end, 5 million were approved. But we do not see that our uh, wishes were taken into account. And as of today, if they say that Ukraine doesn't vote for NATO and the EU, EU, that means that Ukrainians do not get information about EU or NATO. And there are a lot of informational conflict on that, a, a lot of uh, um, it, uh, misuse of uh, the issue of let's discuss, let's discuss, see whether people want NATO and European Union. But when uh, during my second uh, working trip to Brussels tonight, uh, we talked that that was uh, we, we we said that that was a very professional issue to discuss with the society, specifically if the society is not informed. I believe that uh, we have to do some uh, study of that issue, uh, professional study, and learn about it better. And uh, the, on the other hand, the president uh, has to announce his course. He is at the wheel, and we have to trust him. I started to talk about the fact that we are not ready to political reforms at this time because uh, uh, I say that uh, a lot of things are concentrated in his uh, hands, in President's hands. That's why European Union and NATO uh, is the course that I would like to see. Uh, maybe I am a person of new generation. Maybe uh, you can see that I am a person, a pro-patriot and very big pa patriot, and a person who was born in Lviv, etc. So you might find a, a lot of reasons why I say that way, but I would like to make sure that you know I do everything I can to move to that direction. I'm getting, a, I'm conducting a lot of meetings. I am trying to find a way to go around this manipulation of issues. Uh, if we t talk about European Union, then 
a lot of people uh, agree on that, and everybody says that, yes, uh, uh, the president sees this course and we will support him. But you know that NATO creates a lot of conflicts in Ukraine. That's why, first of all, we try to eliminate these uh, conflicts and do not conduct any uh, actions in Ukraine, because it's uh, only worse, because some uh, regions are uh, thinking, some regions think about other regions and not so well. But we have to inform people, first of all, uh, provide high quality information, conduct different roundtable discussions, professional discussion, just disregard the political aspect, but talk about economic side of it and uh, try to justify it. Mm. We have to involve specialists, business elite, and develop those arguments and provide for the society. And only after that we can do polling and survey. And uh, only after the society will receive high quality um, information. Uh, today, unfortunately, in Ukraine, what we see whoever has more money conducts a media campaign, and that's kind of like. Uh, you, as a result, you have incorrect sociology. From the floor. Um, yes, in back, please. Uh, Voice of America, Tatiana Voloshko. A few questions. A new uh, person of new generation that is respected by uh, President Arseniy Yatsenyuk, new Minister of Foreign Affairs. He said that uh, Ukraine should join NATO only after structural reforms, and which means it's in the future. And at the same time, he talked about needs to improve relations with Russia, and his first visit as a Minister of Foreign Affairs is to Moscow. Would you please comment on it? And my next next question. Well, do the next question because the first one is already very hot. I don't know even what to say. I, to, I know those questions are not simple. Maybe briefly tell us about major goal of your visit to the United States. Is this only social and cultural mission or actually the events that are going on in Ukraine, the reason for your visit, or you are trying to find the support of residents? May I start with the second question? Until I answer the, fir the second question, I'll prepare answer to your first question. I do not have any personal uh, orders from President with regard to this trip or from faction. This is my initiative, and that's uh, what differs me if in my activity because I'm finding the initiatives that I believe are necessary and useful for the country, and uh, uh, many of my. Th things, uh, uh, brought positive things to Ukraine and uh, uh, image of Ukraine. And probably as regard, with regard to my visit, yes, I'm trying to combine f two tasks, uh, learn about America as uh, audience, because tomorrow we will have a wonderful performance. And on the other hand, I hope it will be a wonderful performance, a fantastic performance. And on the other hand, I want to have meetings, if possible, during this uh, short period of time. And maybe in my next visit, I will, visits, I would like to meet more people who work here. And because I heard uh, about many organizations, and I'm interested in their work specifically, International Organization for Migration. I would like to talk with them about the uh, human trafficking. I would like to meet with the United Nations because we plan to travel with our mission to Congo with humanitarian aid. I would like to meet with the State Department, uh, specifically with um, the desk of uh, Eastern Europe. And I have my ideas, my visions. and. Uh, um, it's very hard to talk about those things that are not, those are only in the uh, plans. And for me, it is very important to establish contacts uh, because America is very active and we would, I would like to find youth organizations that work here 
and maybe I would be able to establish some relations with them. So I'm interested in everything that is uh, going on, that is happening here in the United States. And yes, this is one of the visits when I am here, not only as a singer, because I travel to the United States as a performer, but uh, and all of my management is here in the United States. I work with American producers and um, as a result of that will be in my next album. But we are not discussing that part today. Uh, that's why we are talking only about uh, my visit as a uh, political uh, activist. I think that I will find uh, a lot of uh, good partners here, that we will be able to find some common ideas to improve social issues in Ukraine and probably provide some support to charitable um, events and charitable um, work. and. Uh, for me, that is more important than uh, uh, my rating, my political or any other rating. First question, hold on. <clears throat> what, uh, how would you comment the France, France uh, uh, statement that Ukraine will be in Europe only when it will deal and, uh, with the problem of gas transportation infrastructure. You know that uh, was uh, mentioned during the last meeting at the time when anyone could say that, but we didn't understand why that was that statement was uh, uh, announced. Uh, that's why I would like to uh, say the following, uh, to support the words of Yatsenyuk. I would like to, to say a few words of support of, to Yatsenyuk, and I hope that uh, Ukraine will find all arguments for both Europe and Russia, because uh, it's a very important uh, geographical country, which is located um, not in the place where we have transit of gas, but also other uh, lines and other, connect other um, relations. That's why we have to get rid of all kind of conflict situation, which includes Russia. I work with Russia a lot. I know <coughs> uh, Russia as a singer and would like to say um, a positive thing about Russia. My uh, participation during, uh, in Orange Revolution didn't uh, uh, affect my uh, position in mass media of Russia. I never s felt any uh, pressure. I always was welcomed uh, on RT and Channel One or any other event. Uh, large events. Um, uh, there were a lot of concerts in Kremlin were, and uh, during state events, etc. That's why that it would be wise for Ukraine today to uh, take into account policy and try to work diplomatic ways out and instead of a sharp statement that irritate everyone and provoke to some conflicts in Ukraine, provoke some conflicts in Ukraine. Out of time, so Mabel, I'm unfortunately going to have to uh, wrap up our session. I would like to take one moment, however, to acknowledge an organization that has really played a very strong role in bringing Ruslana to Washington, D.C. today. Um, and this is Katerina Harovska, who is the head of the committee for the Slavic festival that's going to be taking place tomorrow. What we've heard from Ruslana today really, to a strong degree, is that culture matters, diplomacy matters, mutual understanding matters. It matters between Ukraine and Europe, and it also matters between Ukraine and Russia and many of its Slavic neighbors. Um, and perhaps to this extent, it's been so important for Ruslana to support Ukraine as an independent state, uh, but also Ukraine in a community of Slavic states. Um, and we would like to give Katerina Harovska one minute to just introduce what Ruslana will be uh, participating in over the weekend. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy to see everyone in the audience here. Um, aside from Ukrainian politics that we have been discussing um, right now, another very important issue is culture. And Ukraine's culture 
um, I feel is very important. Um, I would like to thank uh, the Wilson Center for hosting this conference, and I would like to thank uh, Ms. Lezichko for coming to Washington, D.C. and uh, to be taking part in our festival. Um, our festival is called the Slavic Spring Festival. It is the first annual. Um, we are planning to have this on a yearly basis. Uh, we are thinking of moving it to London next year and uh, promoting Slavic culture, not only Slavic culture, but to show Ukraine at its best. We have invited um, Ms. Lezichko because we feel that she is the best person that could possibly represent Ukraine. And, <laughs> and I'm very honored to have her here and to take part in our festival. Um, we have gotten great support. We have 10 embassies that are involved. As of yesterday morning, we had another embassy that confirmed that wanted to uh, participate in this festival in Bulgaria. We're absolutely excited about this and can't wait to, to see everything tomorrow. Um, we got immediate responses from every single embassy that we contacted. Uh, the Ukrainian embassy has been incredible um, with its support, with everything that they provided. I would like to thank them for that. Um, we only approached them a month ago. Within a month, we were able to organize something that we did not feel um, was absolutely possible. But uh, with the support that we have gotten, with the people that have been working with us, we have managed to pull this off. And we are so excited about it. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, what we're trying to promote with this festival is unity through diversity. We feel that that is very important, that um, not only is it important for to combine all our Slavic um, heritage, our history and everything, we feel that it's important to promote it as well, for others to know it, especially in America, where um, sometimes not, it's not forgotten, but it's not known about as it is in Europe. So we feel that's a very important um, aspect of our festival as well. Um, as I said, we hope to have this um, on an annual basis, and um, I'd like to thank for everybody's support and um, everybody's participation in this, and of course, um, Ms. Lysychko for coming here. Thank you very much. We're absolutely honored to have you. I would like to add a few words because uh, I would like to uh, express my support to these initiatives, uh, uh, specifically uh, showing uh, culture, uh, familiarizing with culture. I probably talk about this as a person who sees that there is not enough attention to preservation of our traditions in our country as of today and in charitable and pr social problems. The, having those problems, this uh, issue is an initiative of certain amount of people. And a lot of Americans help uh, in Ukraine, help us in Ukraine, National Archive that would include all uh, folklore um, expeditions. And I also finance and uh, initiate cultural expedition to Carpathian region every year. We travel there, we travel to neighboring countries and learn about their cultures in order to analyze the culture and uh, uh, prepare for the future um, uh, work that we do. Um, I would like to say my personal message uh, there is no culture that should disappear. All ancient and all cultures should be preserved. I had a lot of messages in Europe, and I was asked, many, many people asked me, uh, they asked me, Ruslana, can you suggest how to win Eurovision? And I would like to, I, and I said uh, to young people, I'm not that old, but uh, to younger ones, to younger participants, I told them that who, who asked how to win, I told them, use the culture of your own country. Make it presentable, to, and, you, and people will understand that you love your culture. Because when we went to that, uh, to, to Eurovision, we went uh, with the culture, that the culture we brought from a uh, Carpathian mountain. And people said that, well, Europe will not understand Carpathian culture, but Europe understood it. And it was a, 
a great success i'm sorry i went to my business a few a few business because this is a part of image of ukraine so you see we had a very interesting thing i traveled uh, to many countries and sometimes i saw how people followed uh, the culture that is very popular today, today's subculture of America, which is very popular all over the world. Uh, there are m many countries that cannot use their own culture, and they just repeat after the projects in show business, uh, uh, Spice Girls, uh, Britney Spears, etc. It's very interesting um, what happened to me. I came to the United States. I met American producer who said, we will preserve exclusively the elements, ethnic elements, exotics of Ukraine that you found. And we will do it professionally, just as, as professionally as they do it in the United States. Please join me in thanking Ruslana for joining us today.